This was about uh, maybe seven o'clock in the morning when I got up. And Dad said, or my brother phoned me from his farm and he told me you better swath all that canola down before it freezes up. So that's what I did. I went out to cut the canola. I went to the east end of the field because the field was opened up the night before. There was rounds made around the field, but this was, I had to go to the east end and finish that little corner off. So on the way down, I cut the field in half and went right down the center where that big slough is sitting there. And coming upon the slough, I come across these dome-shaped objects in the field. And I didn't know what the hell they were, but uh, uh, somebody told me that uh, American hunters use these for hunting geese. So I never thought too much of it. Drove to the, driving to the slough with the swathers, so I got a little closer and I stopped because everything was moving. I thought, well, gee, goose blinds don't move, they sit still. So I thought to myself, well, I might as well get off to see what this contraption is. So I got off on the latter side of the swather and I walked towards him and I stopped about roughly 15 feet away from the object because I could see right underneath through it to the bottom. The grass was moving. And I thought to myself, what the devil is that contraption anyway? Because they weren't on the ground, they were off the ground. They are about a foot off the ground. And they were sitting there going around the circle. They weren't standing stationary. I thought the machine was stationary and it wasn't. It was going counterclockwise. The grass was going one way and the machine was going the other way. So I walked a little closer I wanted to really see what it was, but it was moving. An instinct told me to back up, so uh, I backed up to, to stay, stand about at least 15 feet away from him. And I thought, thought to myself, well, that's kind of odd. It's going the opposite way. It's going counterclockwise. It's not going clockwise. It's going counterclockwise. Grass was moving one way and the machine was going the other way. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. I thought, well, I wonder who the hell it is. Some joker probably playing a trick on me. And I was going to walk a little closer. Instinct told me to keep my distance. So I kept my distance and I walked around and I looked at it. What the devil? There's another one on the other side. There were three in a row. One on the south side, about maybe 100 feet away. Another one on the north side, 100 feet away. And there were three in the center. All five machines, there was two on the end there, the two little ones were guarding the three big ones in the center. And it was sitting in a half moon shape. They were sitting like this, all in a circle, half moon position. The others were sitting here, they were sitting here and I was here. Coming down to turn around, I was about 15 feet away. I know you've answered this question a million times, <laughs> but it wasn't natural. It was a machine. These were, these were machines. Machine. It was a machine. Yeah. It was natural. It was metal. You could tell it was metal. Mm -hmm. so, I, I wanted to go up to them and feel them, but instinct told me to keep my distance. Now you tell me, how in the hell they didn't land on the crop and they didn't land on the water? And right Beside the crop, they didn't hit the crop nowhere. All the way around the field. There was one there, one this side, and three here. They never hit the slew. They hit the outline of the whole slew. The bigger ones were about 30 feet in diameter. They had a lip on them, like a bumper all the way around. And it was gray. Very hot at one time. When the metal is, was hot, and when it cools off, it gets gray. And that's just the ring on that machine was great. I'd say it was maybe about that far away from the dome because it was about that thick. Mm -hmm. And it was all the way around the bottom. And why was that end of the dome only gray and not the top end? I, I couldn't figure that one out. The rest of the machine was a shiny silver. Like, like chrome. Yeah. Like, I'd say they were stainless steel because it was a brushed, uh, looked like, like a brushed aluminum. That's what it looked like. And uh, you could tell there was rivets all around because when it was turning, you could see these little bumps going around once in a while. If you'd blink, you could see the bumps. Because you watch something in a, in a fan, you look at a fan and you blink, you could make out the whole stripping of the fan. And when you're standing there watching with your eyes open and you go, don't blink, 
you can't make out what that looks like. You blink, you can make exactly what that fan looks like. It's uh, it's it's like this, straight across. But it's this is the dome of it, right here. So it was sectional like that? Yeah, oh yeah. It was because you could tell the lip on this side was uh, hot at one time. And up here there was just like rivets going around it all the way around. All you could tell there was some compartments but you couldn't make out what they were and now you know you blink and you could see rivets uh, they were round they were had round tops on them and they were they were going around there was some in the top some in the center some in the bottom the outside dome was chrome and that uh, foot thing was gray and the bottom machine had four pipes and they were huge they weren't small they were all in around the outside and that's what i think made that impression in the ground because it was turning I said, the machine is brushed stainless steel. That's what it looks like. And I said, it's as shiny as could be. And it's that bottom lip is about a foot wide, and it is not shiny. It looked like it was hot at one time. What I couldn't figure out, why they were so close together. You couldn't get your hand between the two of them. But when you notice this, you know, I was standing there, and I was dumbfounded. I didn't know what the hell was going on. Your mind is trying to get this thing all unraveled, but it doesn't unravel. God, I was scared. I was just th thinking to myself, they just come towards me. I'm history. And there was three, there was five of them, and there was only one of me. And gee whiz, you started to think. I, I was scared stiff. I didn't know what to do. You know, if somebody would have just clapped your hands, I think it would drop dead right there. <laughs> I was so scared. But you know, it, it's mind-boggling the way it works. It's really mind-boggling. So uh, instinct told me when I walked up to the machine to back up because uh, have you ever had instinct tell you this you walk up to the back end of a combine and there's something turning and instinct will tell you to back up right away it won't let you get closer or touch something that is turning you stick your hand into a fan would you instinct will tell you keep your distance that's what it'll tell you right away and a lot of guys says well how could you tell that I said that something in the back of my head was telling me, keep my distance, stay back, dangerous. So you keep your distance. And it was cold. It was, I had a parka on that day, gloves on, caps with flaps down, and it was so cold, I was shaking. And then you get towards this goddamn machine that's standing there, you could, I, I was just gritting my teeth. What the devil could that damn thing be? And it's not a goose boy, because I know what they look like. And I said, well, this damn sucker's turning. Why would it be turning? Did you hear anything? No, like, no sound. No sound. No sound. All I could hear was the swaths running. And that, when you walk up to something, your mind goes blank. Because mm -hmm. you're, you're so scared that everything seems to... I had this uh, echoing sound in my ears. And I thought, well, the swaths ain't running anymore. What the hell? And it, it disappears out of your mind. Your mind is like a picture. It just stops. And I thought to myself, now what the devil? So I thought, you know, you got all kinds of things going through your head and you're standing there and thinking and thinking. And then all of a sudden you know, your mind tells you, you better back up and go to that swather and get back on and get the H out of here. And I thought to myself, well, I better get on the swather. I <laughs> backed up all the way to the swather backwards. I didn't take my eyes off the object. And I got on, on the wheel side of the swather. And you think this water would move? Edge and was dead. Because when I got off, the edge was running. It wouldn't start, the uh, ignition was dead. It was completely dead. And the engine was running when I got off of it. Because mm -hmm. the ignition key was turned over to the side. And uh, I tried it and I tried it and it just would not start. So I'm sitting there waiting. No, I was thinking what the hell to do. What are you going to do when that damn thing comes towards you? I'm telling you, I was so scared, I didn't know. The, the, the whites, I could imagine my gloves, the whites, you could see all your knuckles, because I was sitting there just gritting my teeth, trying to move, and I couldn't. So it was cold, and I was sitting there, I don't know how long I sat on that spot. I, was, uh, I thought to myself, well, the gate is closed over there. How the hell if I ever get this contraption started, I ain't gonna stop, I'm gonna go straight through that gate, and I'm not getting off. And it wouldn't move. It just would not move. It was frozen. Like somebody just froze it to the ground. It would not, the engine wouldn't go. 
So I sat there maybe, I don't know, half an hour, maybe an hour. And all of a sudden the suckers started to lift off the ground. Now they were going up slowly in a step formation. The big one, like the three big ones in the center took off first. And then the little ones followed. And they were just right over top of my head. And I thought to myself, well now what the hell am I going to do? You look up, what the hell now they were top of my head? And that's going on in your mind. And you look up and I said, no, they're too damn close. They're closer now than they were before. And you could see the whole bottom of that machine. Boy, what an outfit. That's a wonder who the hell makes that. That's the one right there. But the dome could be a little more pointed. You know, it was... So there, there wasn't... Was there an opening on the body? On the bottom it was open. It was... Uh, like a vent? Like vents. There was about four of them. Here there was uh, one uh, one in that corner, one in this corner, one over there, one over here. There was four of them. That's all I remember. But they were huge. Now, yeah. They weren't small pipes. To me it looked like it was their way of maneuvering the machine, moving it. But when they were above my head, I couldn't figure this out. They were straight down. Mm -hmm. And how the hell did they get from that slew over my head? I was 15 feet away, so they had to move over. So what drove them over sideways? And uh, you try to figure this all out. It doesn't make sense. And uh, then I thought to myself, maybe those pipes, they moved or something, you know, at an angle to get the machine to move over. The pattern was like... Uh, but can you draw the underside of those well, things? The underside was... Well, let's say a round circle like this, and it was round deals like this all the way around. There were portholes, actually. And uh, when you look underneath them, there was more than four. Because when I looked at from the side of it, it looked like there was four. But there's more. There's, uh, I can't remember now, is it six or seven? There was a pile of them anyway. But they all turn according to what that looked like when you look from the bottom up. Mm -hmm. And you know how the machine looked like in the bottom? It was like yeah, molded. Uh, you couldn't tell if there was bolts or whatever underneath. It wasn't. But it was like that all the way around. And they were on the outside only. The center had a big circle. That's all it had. And there was nothing out of there. But... Uh, I can still see that as plain as day. I have uh, nightmares about this bottom part. And then I thought, well, I better see if that swatch is going to start. Still wouldn't start. Everything was dead. So I sat there some more and they were sitting on one spot. They were just hovering there on one spot over the top of my head. And, and the crop, it was flattened right out. You know, there was crop on either side of me. And it was fl the pressure from the objects that were these machines running, you couldn't tell what the hell it was. Hmm. It was just, uh, all you could see was like when they got higher up, it was like a vapor. Like you see behind a, a jet plane, a vapor, but you couldn't see it that clear. It was more like a fog, you know, it was thinner. Do you think that was just the air or was that something that the vehicle was pumping out? Well, it come out of the ports, you know, it come out of these ports, the vapor. It, uh, it was actually, Going down, as the thing rose up, it was pushing this vapor down. But uh, and did it look? I couldn't feel anything. That's what I I couldn't figure out. Did it look like smog? Did it look? Well, yeah, something like it. Uh, Blue you know gray how it, or how when it hits the ground, it sort yeah. of flares out. Yeah. That's what it was doing. But you couldn't feel anything. 